Uh, thank you for inviting me today. I won't talk about exercise or uh, movement. <laughs> the only movement I will, I will talk about will be the movement of the receptor on the mm, cell membrane. So, <laughs> um, the, um, I come from a laboratory um, um, that works on uh, vascular biology and in particular we deal with the, the, angiogenic, pro the, the angiogenic process that, that is a uh, um, multi-step uh, process uh, that implies the um, uh, destabilization of the um, vessel with the detachment of the pericytes and the vasodilatation then uh, um, endothelial activated endothelial cells uh, produce uh, uh, metalloproteases and um, to for the degradation of the extracellular matrix um, they proliferate and migrate to form new vessels uh, and to um, produce uh, a new extracellular matrix and recruit uh, um, uh, pericytes. One of the most important receptors in uh, vascular biology and in angiogenesis is uh, VEGF receptor 2. That is uh, um, a receptor, a tyrosine kinase receptor, very huge, expressed by endothelial cells, but not only by endothelial cells. And uh, mm, uh, when it it uh, is activated by its ligands, uh, dimerizes, uh, it autophosphorylates and use uh, intracellular signaling that brings to uh, cellular motility, cellular survival, and um, uh, at the end uh, to vascular permeability and angi angiogenesis. One of the most important uh, uh, ligands of, ligand of uh, VEGF receptor 2 is VEGFA. Um, that is very, very important uh, proangiogenic factor and uh, very studied. In our laboratory, um, 10 years ago, uh, they found that uh, also this factor that is called gremlin is able to bind and activate VEGF receptor 2 and uh, to induce uh, some uh, endothelial cells uh, mo modification, pheno phenotypical modification, that are similar to those uh, uh, induced by VGFA. Uh, during these years, uh, um, we characterized the action of gremlin and its activation of uh, VGF receptor 2, and we uh, used uh, different times uh, uh, fluorescent proteins and uh, um, um, imaging technologies to visualize uh, different aspects of uh, VGF receptor 2 activation by, by gremlin. Um, what about fluorescent proteins are uh, um, uh, Proteins uh, that are uh, um, now that are uh, a lot, uh, a huge family. Uh, the first recognized was the green fluorescent proteins, and it was it isolated from the jellyfish Aquara Victoria in the 1955, and uh, from a researcher that uh, that is uh, Shimomura, and he, he had uh, the Nobel Prize for discovery of <laughs> of uh, GFP. Um, they are very small uh, proteins uh, um, with uh, this particular structure that is called beta barrel and they do not have any enzymatic activity, they do not need any other accessory protein, they f make fluorescence uh, um, just having the uh, fluorophore composed by uh, the lateral chains of three different amino acids that are uh, these that are exposed in the inner part of the protein and are protected by the, the rest of the structure. After the discovery of GFP and the discovery of other natural fluorescent proteins, uh, the molecular engineering uh, gave rise to uh, a lot of uh, fluorescent proteins that span all over the wavelength, the visible wavelength. So now when we use fluorescent protein in research, we can choose the color we, we prefer to see at, under the microscope. 
In our case, we used uh, um, different times fluorescent proteins to visualize our receptor. And in particular, uh, we used them uh, as a tag uh, that were uh, put after the coding sequence and before the stop codon of our protein so that uh, we have a protein that uh, is uh, fluorescent and in the case of VGF receptor 2 as the fluorescent the the fluorescent part in the intracellular uh, portion of the of the cell um, we used these uh, you will see we we used uh, both the full length of the receptor and in other cases uh, the, the, the extracellular domain of that, was, uh, always fused with the uh, fluorescent protein. In these years, uh, we used this kind of uh, mm, tool to visualize different uh, um, aspects of uh, VGF receptor 2 activation, mm, uh, leading from dimerization to do, uh, the interaction between VGF receptor 2 with the coreceptors, its uh, recruitment by immobilized ligands, uh, in our case, gremlin and uh, to study the changes in the motility of the receptor on the surface of uh, endothelial cells. At first, uh, we saw that the gremlin was able to induce the activation and so the phosphorylation of the receptor. But we wanted also to see uh, if uh, gremlin was able to induce the dimerization of the receptor that, that is uh, uh, the most important um, uh, event that demonstrated that uh, the phosphorylation in, is not linked to intracellular uh, activity but is linked to the transphosphorylation of the two subunits of the receptor. So um, we used uh, um, fluorescent proteins uh, in, uh, this, um, in this assay that is called fluorescence resonant e energy transfer FRET that is a powerful technique for studying interaction of proteins into living cells. And um, that is a, a um, process that is uh, uh, distant dependent. So um, it, uh, it was very useful to study the, um, the dimerization of the receptor. So when two subunits come closer one to each other. Um, in this uh, phenomenon, um, there is the, the transfer of the energy uh, from uh, one molecule that is called donor to the other that is called acceptor. In this case, uh, the couple of uh, FRET uh, used was uh, ECFP and EYFP, that means enhanced the CFP and YFP. Um, and uh, what uh, we, would, uh, we saw uh, was the, that um, after dimerization of the receptor, the energy was transferred by, uh, transferred by uh, from a CFP to YFP, and we could not see the fluorescence of CFP, so we could not see a light at uh, this wavelength, but we could see light at the um, wavelength of the emission of the acceptor. Uh, we created this uh, model in which uh, two monomers of the receptor were expressed by the cell fused with ECFP and EYFP. In the um, station, stationary, um, um, at the beginning of the experiment, the two receptors do not interact uh, with, with each other. After the, the um, subministration of the ligand, you can see the dimerization and so the fret, uh, uh, the fret event. Um, we could see um, the, um, this interaction af uh, after 40 minutes of, uh, of uh, stimulation. That means that uh, no, one, no other um, factors were produced by the cell, but uh, the, inter the interaction was due to uh, binding of the ligand directly to the receptor. Um, the images were in, in this protocol images were taken for both uh, the donor, the acceptor and the FRET channel. That means uh, the excitation of the donor and, uh, a, and emission of the acceptor. And then using a particular algorithm, we could uh, 
um, define the amount of um, uh, threat signal. Uh, we could demonstrate that as well as VEGF, Gremlin was able to induce the dimerization of the receptor. And when we go deep, we went deeper and we um, analyzed the kinetic of the activation, we could see that the Gremlin had uh, uh, different uh, um, dimerization kinetics uh, respect to VEGF and induces the dimerization a bit slowly respect to VEGF demonstrating that uh, each ligand has, uh, is a particular binding finger fingerprinting that depends also in the recruitment of uh, accessory proteins or co-receptors. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, probably uh, gremlin induces the slower dimerization of the receptor uh, because it is not able to induce the interaction between VGF receptor 2 and europilin 1 that is a particular a particular co-receptor that is uh, um, recruited by VGF but not by gremlin. Another um, aspect of uh, um, VGF receptor 2 activation in endothelial cells by its ligand, for example VGF, um, in, is uh, the induction of the interaction between VGF receptor 2 and another co-receptor that is the alpha V beta 3 integrin. Um, in particular, we had um, some um, uh, information about uh, cross-talk between uh, um, VGF receptor 2 and the integrin, that means that the recruitment of the engagement of the integrin uh, induces an, uh, an increase of the activation of the receptor, uh, just like in this case. So the binding of uh, cells to fibrinogen that is a particular ligand of alpha V beta 3 integrin induces an increase on, on uh, um, VGF receptor 2 activation. And on the other hand, uh, we knew that uh, um, VGF receptor 2 and the integrin form a um, complex and can co-immunoprecipitate uh, in Western blot. Given this observation, we decided to, un to uh, analyze the possibility of a direct interaction between the receptor and the beta-3 integrin subunit. We use, again, the um, uh, threat uh, technology, but in this case uh, we decided to use the acceptor photobleaching uh, uh, method that consists in um, the observation at the end of the interaction between donor and acceptor, an increase of, of uh, uh, donor fluorescence after the pho complete photobleaching of the acceptor. It means that um, if you know that two proteins are interacting one with the, with the other and the threat is, is uh, occurring, when you del um, um, completely bleach, um, remove the, the fluorescent protein that act as a acceptor, you will see an increase of the fluorescence of the donor. So we co-transfected cells with uh, these two uh, vectors, one being a VGF receptor 2 uh, with the donor and uh, beta 3 integrin with the donor and the other being the extracellular domain of VGF receptor 2 with the acceptor. We made the, the interaction, um, we induced the interaction between uh, the, the integrin and the receptor giving the ligand and then we bleached, completely bleached the fluorescence of the, the molecules of the acceptor to see the recovery of fluorescence of the donor. We could demonstrate, in this way, we could demonstrate that the gremlin, as well as VGF, was able to induce the, the direct interaction between beta-3 integrin subunit and VGF receptor 2 on the surface of endothelial cells. Another uh, aspect uh, of uh, heparin binding protein as, uh, that, that are, uh, for example, gremlin and VGF and a lot of uh, growth factors that uh, act through uh, tyrosine kinase receptors um, is that uh, these proteins are uh, highly basic and heparin binding. 
it means that uh, uh, they bind uh, not only heparin but also heparin sulfate protoglycans uh, expressed both on cell surface and in where they act as uh, uh, low affinity high capacity uh, receptors and uh, um, Oh, mm, they can, so they can bind the parent sulfate protoglycans both on the cell surface and the extra, in the extracellular matrix. Um, this means that uh, probably uh, when we think about uh, growth fact, heparin binding growth factors, uh, just like uh, gremlin, expressed by a tumor, we do not have to think of, of, the, of them um, as uh, soluble factor, free factors, but uh, as uh, uh, immobilized and linked to the extracellular matrix. And this is the, the example of uh, um, uh, adeno, um, adenocarcinoma, human adenocarcinoma xenograft injected subcutaneously in mice, uh, where we um, stain, uh, th that we stained for the expression of uh, uh, gremlin and we could see that the gremlin is uh, uh, in green is in the stroma surrounding endothelial cells and in particular uh, CD31 positive endothelial cells that represent the um, blood vessels. Uh, so we changed our point of view. We try to uh, work uh, with the uh, ligand not not uh, given soluble but immobilized on the, on the substrate to see if uh, uh, it was able to induce the rearrangement of uh, the receptor on the endothelial cell surface and to see if there was uh, in, in, uh, in vitro and in, in vivo there was uh, a polarity of the receptor in, in endothelial cells. This is a, a model in which, uh, using fluorescent proteins, we could demonstrate that uh, uh, immobilized gremlin is able to induce the relocalization of the receptor on endothelial cell surface. Um, we used uh, um, cells overexpressing gremlin, and we seeded them in the lower surface of uh, um, filter of in a Boyden chamber, and we left them produce gremlin attached to their uh, own uh, extracellular matrix. We used the endothelial cells expressing uh, uh, the extracellular domain of VGF receptor linked to the, the acceptor. In this case, uh, it's not important the acceptor or the, or the donor because we use just one uh, fluorescence. And we left them uh, uh, migrate to the stimulus. This uh, is called a classical aptotactic uh, migration because uh, uh, endothelial cells migrate to, um, to an um, immobilized stimulus. What we saw is that uh, uh, in both cases, so in the control um, lineage that is the same uh, fibroblast uh, not expressing gremlin or in uh, um, the case of uh, ma cell migrating to uh, of, um, gremlin overexpressing fibroblast, we saw the um, formation of protrusion into pores. But uh, when this protrusion and this migration was induced by immobilized gremlin, we could see an enrichment um, of this protrusion in uh, VGF receptor 2, demonstrating that uh, immobilized gremlin can uh, recruit the receptor in endothelial cells. Uh, using the fret acceptor photobleaching, we also showed show that uh, that uh, um, gremlin is also uh, immobilized gremlin is also able to induce uh, the uh, interaction between uh, VGF receptor two and beta three integrin at the basal side of, side of endothelial cells, and uh, we go deeper in this. We went deeper in this. Um, in this uh, observation and we try to understand if uh, VGF receptor 2 needed the presence of beta 3 integrin to uh, reorganize on the surface uh, of endothelial cells of, or this interaction was uh, late respect to its recruitment. So we used uh, uh, the same cells that, uh, that were used for uh, uh, the threat acceptor photobleaching experiment, but in this case uh, we follow them uh, using time lapse and zeta stack uh, imaging, uh, 
uh, to visualize both the receptor and the integrin during the adhesion of endothelial cells to immobilized factor. And what we saw is that the gremlin is able to induce the recruit, specific recruitment of the receptor very early respect to uh, the recruitment of beta-3 integrin, demonstrating that the receptor moves along and then interacts with the integrin after uh, the adhesion of, of, of the cell. In the case of fibrinogen, that is a, a specific ligand of alpha V beta 3 integrin, the, um, the situation was the, the, oppo the opposite for the integrin, so fibrinogen was able to induce the uh, specific recruitment of uh, uh, alpha V beta 3 integrin, but was not able to recruit VGF receptor 2. The last thing, um, we also saw that uh, the receptor, when recruited, is localized into particular and specific uh, um, structure of the membrane that are called planar lipid reft, that are uh, cholesterol enriched region of the membrane that are uh, um, refts that moves in the, in the plasma membrane. And we saw that uh, the disruption of these uh, structures blocks the activation of the receptor. So we knew that uh, lipid reft was impor were important for the activity and the, and the activation of the receptor. Um, the recruitment of uh, proteins into um, dense structure of the membrane induces the um, the capture of these proteins on the plasma membrane and could modify their movement um, and their motility in this uh, uh, two-dimensional space. As, the, as shown here, so one protein, uh, transmembrane protein, that is not linked to an, any other protein or any other structure can move rapidly through the two-dimensional space of the plasma membrane, where it, it is trapped by other proteins or uh, uh, membrane structures, is slow down. It slow down. So we decided to uh, study the movement of the recept VGF receptor 2 on the plasma membrane of cells treated with VGF or gremlin to see if we could see uh, we could uh, observe any differences between the movement of the receptor in, in the absence of the stimulus or in the presence of different stimulu stimuli. Um, to do that, we use the fluorescence recovery after photobleaching, that is a technique that consists in the bleaching, irreversibly bleaching of uh, fluorescent proteins in a small area of the cell. Uh, with a high power laser beam, so at the confocal microscope, and then the recording of the movement of uh, uh, bleach the protein from the space of bleaching outside and uh, unbleached protein from outside to inside. This particular technique allow us allow to um, define two different uh, um, characteristics of the protein in analysis, in analysis that are the diffusion co coefficient that uh, uh, is uh, the velocity of the molecule on the surface and the mobile or immobile fraction of the protein in analysis. In our case, we used uh, the extracellular domain of the receptor uh, linked to EYFP we, um, mm, we applied the FRAP, um, the FRAP uh, protocol that consists in the mm, bleaching of a particular region and then the recording of uh, uh, 10 different uh, images in the 10 minutes after the bleaching. And then we analyzed the diffusion coefficient and the uh, mobile and mobile fractions. And what we could find, what we could see is that uh, um, when um, the receptor 
is uh, stimulated by VEGF or gremlin, it slow down, it uh, slow down um, and uh, it, it becomes a more immo immobile. Demonstrated that uh, it is recruited maybe or in a particular uh, dense, more dense structure of the membrane or it, uh, it is um, interacting with, the, with, with the prote intracellular proteins or with the cytoskeleton. What we are going to do uh, is uh, to use the tec this technique to disrupt uh, again lipid draft to see if uh, we can see the, the increase of the, of the movement of the receptor or uh, the completely slow down of the receptor, the, the increase of the mobile fraction. So, um, using uh, microscopy technologies associated to fluorescent protein expression, uh, we were able to um, analyze different uh, characteristics uh, of VGF receptor 2 and different, uh, through different approaches. And we could see its dimerization, interaction with co-receptors, its recruitment by uh, immobilized ligands, and uh, we could uh, start to study its uh, movement uh, uh, through um, plasma membrane of uh, cells. Thank you. Thank you.